Thanks for watching Turner Classic Movies, where we are marking the 100th anniversary of the founding of Warner Brothers. I'm Eddie Muller, with you on Wednesdays in April to celebrate the studio's memorable contract players. Next up, Paul Muni. Although he was crucial to the studio at the time, today the chameleon-like Muni often seems overshadowed by the studio's more iconic contract players, James Cagney, Humphrey Bogart, and our star from earlier tonight. Edward G. Robinson. Muni stars in a biopic based on the life of one of France's most prominent writers of the 19th century. Released in 1937, it's the life of Emile Zola. Muni portrays Zola across the decades, his early years struggling as a writer, then becoming a literary success in France, and late in life, his decision to take on a great political injustice. Zola puts his reputation on the line defending a French army captain accused of treason in what became known as the Dreyfus Affair. Even as a child, Paul Muni was an actor, performing on the Yiddish stage. As a teenager, he became known for his makeup skills, which allowed him to play older characters convincingly. As an adult, Muni turned to film and signed with Fox in 1929, picking up an Oscar nomination for his first picture, the Valiant. In 1932, he starred in the two films that cemented his success. Scarface, an independent production from Howard Hughes, in which Muni played a thinly veiled version of Al Capone. He followed that high voltage performance with his first film at Warner's, I Am a Fugitive from a Chain Gang, which earned Muni his second Oscar nomination and a seven year contract from the studio. Warner's kept him busy during the 30s, and even allowed him to approve his movie projects, something practically unheard of during the studio system era. Muni was the studio's go-to actor for prestigious productions and biographical dramas. Warner's created the life of Emile Zola specifically to win awards, and it delivered. The film earned the studio its first Oscar for Best Picture, one of a then record 10 nominations it received, including another Best Actor nomination for Muni. He'd won the award the previous year for another Warner's movie, The Story of Louis Pasteur. Co-starring Gail Sondergaard and directed by William Dieterle, here is The Life of Emile Zola. Paul Muni, the star of The Life of Emile Zola, delivers a critical line of dialogue at an important moment in the film. The truth is on the march, and nothing will stop it. And while the film told a true story, it didn't tell the whole story. An ugly undercurrent of anti-Semitism ran through the case against Alfred Dreyfus, the Jewish army captain accused by the French of treason. The script for the life of Emile Zola was originally sent by its screenwriters to director Ernst Lubitsch at Paramount. Lubitsch immediately recognized its potential, but also recognized that there was only one actor that was right for the starring role, Paul Muni. Lubitsch took the highly unusual step of placing art over profits by helping the writers take the story to Paramount's rival, Warner Brothers. Next up, another prestigious biopic from Warner Brothers, anchored by the performance that won Paul Muni his only Oscar. The story of Louis Pasteur is next on Turner Classic Movies.